Welcome to my office. Been expecting you. Who says that? Bon? I don't know. What's up, we the bros, and welcome to the production channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about a gimbal that we recently purchased, which is this right here. We'll be unboxing this and getting into it in just a moment. Uh, one, the camera I'm gonna be using for today for the gimbal is the uh, Mark III, uh, the 5D EOS. It is the DSLR camera that um, Canon makes. So if you have one of these, then we'll be able to test this out so you won't have to do any testing at home. Uh, but this, the reason why I'm using this camera is because this camera and this lens together is one of the heaviest setups that we have right now. So I wanna use the heaviest setups, that way we have a ballpark idea of how to get this squared away so we can use that for the camera that you're watching this video on, which is the EOS R6. That is the Canon, that's the Canon camera that we normally use for most of our candid shots on the channel. Uh, and then I believe yours is the other one, which is the Rebel T3i. The Rebel T3i, yeah. So we'll have a ballpark idea to basically go from the heaviest to the lightest after that. So we'll try and explain that as well as we go through it. Um, but yeah, before we get too far in either of these videos, uh, let's go ahead and pray for today's video. Then we'll get squared away with all the stuff that we're doing because we're going to do the unboxing first and then figure out how this goes onto that. It'll be a fun time and hopefully you guys will learn something from it because that's the point of this video. And well, depending upon which channel you're watching it on, the channel in general. So let's pray. Uh, Father God, thank you for the opportunity to uh, bless us to be able to purchase this. I uh, thank you for watching watching over us and keeping us safe as we've done other videos in the past. And I pray that you'd watch over us and keep us safe as we continue using both of these things for you and your glory and for more better content for obviously for your glory, like I just said. Anyway, um, again, I want to thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for blessing the channel. Bless the people watching and watch over everyone and keep everyone safe that is participating in any facet of what we're doing. In your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. So let's get right into the video. I've been running low on patience Got no creativity, I'm keeping people waiting Look, mama's asking when I'm dropping what I wrote last year But my ADD is kicking, I don't think it's really clear Who I'm trying to be, man, I'm feeling grown now Wifey cooking in the kitchen, smelling really good now I know all that glitter isn't gold They treat me like a joke They listen to a couple songs and they think that Alright, so for the time being, since this camera is not going to be used What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this to the side uh, Right over here real quickly And then we're going to take a look at this because I want to go ahead and unbox this real quickly. Um, I will be folding it this way so uh, I'll just unbox it and drag it out so that way you guys can see uh, what it looks like, some stuff like that, and we'll go over some stuff. Uh, whenever you first open it, it looks like we have this foam board which I'm probably gonna leave. It sits right there on top of the equipment and then there's this, there's this one here too. I'm not sure if this one's useful as well, um, so we'll, I'll probably just hang on to both of them for the time being, uh, but it looks like it's packaged up nicely, so that's good. Uh, then there is a operation manual, or no, it's a disclaimer and warning, which is what this is. It basically tells you, um, well, disclaimer and warning, basically the, the normal stuff like, hey, don't use this when your hands are wet or if it electrocutes you while your hands are wet, then it was your fault to begin with kind of thing. Uh, one thing that we haven't mentioned so far on camera is that this is the Crane 4 model of whatever, however you pronounce this company properly. I'll have to go figure out how to pronounce it properly. Uh, the spelling for the company is Z-H-I-Y-U-N. Um, I'll have that on screen for you as well. So you can take a look at that. and. I think that this is going to be a really decent setup because you're able to strap this in. I've noticed that with some of the stuff that GoPro does, like the GoPro Karma case that came with the GoPro Karma that we have some time back, we never did a review on it because we didn't seem it was we, we didn't deem it necessary at the time. Um, but GoPro doesn't have their stuff strapped in where it's like Velcro. It's normally just like an elastic strap that you slide stuff underneath or um, no straps at all. But depending upon how it's packaged like the Karma case is packaged like super tight. It's not necessary. So this is an interesting, it's an interesting take to the packing for technology. Just thought I'd mention that in case someone's interested in it. 
So um, I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer so we can talk about this and take a look at it a little bit more in depth so that way you guys aren't just staring at me sitting in a chair for 20 minutes. So I'm um, gonna we'll go ahead and start by unpacking this. This is the actual, um, the actual gimbal itself. Um, it's got a little rubber piece at the bottom for its charging port which is kind of nice, a little protective bit. So like if we're recording somewhere where it's dusty or something, you can just throw that over it to make sure that there's no grit or anything that gets in it, which I really like. Uh, there's a couple of things that come along with this. There is the pan access motor, which is this bottom one, which is what you're connected to grip wise. Uh, this is the one that you would be using to go from left to right. Uh, this one back here is the roll access motor. So think of it as a rotation portion this is the one that rotates and then this one right here is your tilt access motor that would be anything that goes forward or backwards um, that is super necessary for what you're doing uh, basically whenever you're like like say if i had it like this and i'm tilting it forward like this it would keep the camera level as it tilts rather than rather than just continuing it along with like a like a normal um, tripod or whatever. Uh, something else that comes along with this is a micro tripod, uh, which is really nice. Like compared to the other one that we have, I don't know if I still have it anywhere in like quick, quick accessibility. Uh, but this has rubber along this side, which is good for grip. Uh, it's designed specifically to be um, stuck into this at the threads at the bottom which is common with most, most products like this, uh, which also means that we could mount this to a tripod as well, which is pretty cool um, for extended reach or what, whatnot. So basically you put that in like that and then you can just open it up for stationary stuff, which is awesome. So this is the standard model, actually. There is a pro model that you can order as well. Um, I just, for the money that this was, it was, I believe, 669 that's what this was and the the pro one was 700 something I, I, i'll have the numbers on screen after i go back and look at it as well uh, but the biggest difference that come along that comes along with the pro versus the standard version is there is a um there's a it would be right here on this side right here there's threads on either side which is why this kind of resembles a like rc car style grip um, this is where the uh, elbow mount would go. Not, it sounds weird, but think of it like this, where you put your wrist on it. But it's designed for, it's like, it's called an elbow because it looks like an elbow. Uh, and then this side right here is where you would put the other portion where it sits further out so you can have stuff it's a separate system and you can adjust it it's super fancy i might look to see if they offer the adapter separately moving forward because i think for the kind of content that we do that would be interesting to have to get more more extension to it uh, but obviously for just this video by itself it shouldn't be necessary so we'll probably transgress into the portion that we're all been waiting for which is the assimilation part so i can show you guys how this works and how to put it together so you can get your cameras on a gimbal at home. This is how, whenever I opened it, this is how it looked. I'm not sure if this is every box. Obviously, whenever you open it up, you'll figure it out. Uh, but there are three components that come in this pack over here. I believe this is going to be the stuff to be able to be put on the camera and also onto the gimbal so you can mount it separately. And then there's stuff over here as well. Uh, these are your, um, your Allen keys. There's also this little thing that looks like the if you've ever seen the shell station logo that's what it looks like that's the best way to, to, to describe it i'll show it on screen a little bit just to show you because that would be hilarious to compare that to that uh, it comes with another mount it's a little bit thicker and there's a little bit more of a ridge to it so i'm not sure how this is applicable just yet i'll have to take a look at that yet um uh, and then the last package that it comes with is a little um rubber i believe it's rubber it's the same thing that came with the media mod to basically protect the light housing that's on this uh, and then there's also a couple different adapters that allows you to go from uh from type c to micro usb uh type c to 
Um, the other micro USB, it's like the camera control cable. There's also type C to type C, type C to USB, and then type C to multi USB, which is um, pretty much what we're gonna be using for today's video for that camera because the multi USB is what's used for the um, removal of clips and also for connecting because there's other stuff that I've done research wise for that. You can actually use that camera as a webcam camera with that specific cable. If that's something that you're interested in and you want to know more about that, just leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll try and make a video for that as well because it's a super simple process. It only took me like 10 minutes collectively to figure it out as a whole. So it'll be super fun to uh, explore that and show you guys that. Only if you're interested though because obviously you know, if, you're, if you don't want to know, you don't want to know. So now that we have all this unpackaged, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside for the time being because this is not used for what we're doing. We can pretty much get this thing fully set up with these three bags here, and I'll show you how to do that uh, step by step. Uh, the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and obviously open each of these and get the necessary items out that we need to continue doing the video. We need this. This is your commonly, commonly looked at as like your platform. This is what you're going to be putting the camera on. This is going to directly connect to the base of the camera, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. It has a lock latch on the side, much like the gimbal itself, and I'll show you how that works as well in just a moment. It also comes with these two, um, depending upon how it's packaged it, they may come connected they may not come connected uh, I will show you how to connect these uh, all of these have a independent lock system for each portion of the uh, of the setup uh, for this one specifically this slide bar right here there's an arrow right at the top of it I don't know if you can see that on camera or not it's on the opposite side of which the logo is at uh, basically, it's a full set ruler. So there's a logo there, and then there's the area, there's the arrow up top. It matches up directly with the arrow of this platform, and this is actually going to be the platform that connects directly to the gimbal at the very top. And I'll show you how to connect that as well. Uh, much like everything else on this cam on this gimbal itself, it also has latches. These are different latches for different purposes. There's two on this one, and there's also two push pins that have locking mechanisms, and I'll explain how that works as well. All right, so first step is you need to make sure that the locks are facing the opposite direction of which the arrow is placed, because if you switch it over there, it'll lock. Then when, what you wanna do is you wanna take these two arrows and slide them to where they get close, and you, once you feel that click, you know that you have it slide in fully. You push this button right here, which moves the slide bar, which allows you to slide it fully, and then this is locked in here as a independent slide system. Now this is where the first locking system comes in. If you lock this one, I believe, it will no longer slide at all, no matter where you put it at. This will be used for the balancing feature, which we'll be doing in just a moment. So uh, remember that for whenever we do that. Uh, so this portion right here, we're not going to add this to this just yet, just because you want to be able to mount this to the camera first, so you have a ballpark idea of uh, how this goes on. So we'll set this aside for the time being as well, and we'll get the next couple of pieces out so we can continue doing this setup. So out of this bag, uh, we need three things. We need this Y connector right here. Well, I say three things. There's actually five things. We need this as a mount. Uh, we need the Allen key. We need one of these bolts, which I'm really glad that they sent like three as well, because there's like four of them all together, this one being the fourth one. And they, that's nice because if I lose one, like I lose quite often, that's really good to have those to, re to be replaced. So I'm gonna set the rest of those aside so we have those, so we keep tabs on them. And then this is, I'm not sure what this is. This is like the equivalent of a, um, of a flathead screwdriver, but it's just, it's in the shape of the, the the Shell Station logo. I don't know why. I'll put that on screen to show you because I'm not stupid, even though I am. Um, but you need this as well. So we'll come back to these once I, once I get the adapter out for this. So for this setup, you need the USB to multi-USB multi or um, 
yeah, I said that right, multi-USB. And that would essentially be the Type-C connector to the multi-USB. You can kind of see the uh, the faces on that so you have a ballpark idea of what you're looking at. Um, obviously, depending upon which camera you use, it might be different. Um, so just keep that into account that not every setup is going to be the same unless you have the same camera specifically. And then this is the rubber piece that goes over the, uh, let's see if I can get that on. There we go, that goes over the light that's connected to this. Um, so I'll have to do some more research and to figure out how this works uh, specifically. I'm, most of the stuff I've learned either watching their setup stuff or from what I've seen uh, online. So we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there because there's some information I don't know and I'll try and get that before the end product of the video so that way we can assist you uh, with your setup fully so that's not something you have to worry about. So now that we have the pieces that we want to use for uh, the setup portion I'm gonna go ahead and start with the simplest version of this. Uh, basically this is how I would assemble it up if you're if you if you're new to this type of product at home. Uh, basically this right here this little Y is your um, your lens like stabilizer it, it, that won't make sense until you see it but basically what you do is you set it right here at the very front of this and then take this right here because it's easier for you to get your fingers on I would recommend using this one at least uh, then basically you put it together and screw it in uh, once I can get the threads going this is a uh, since everything or a majority of this is made out of metal, it's slightly difficult to get your fingers on, um, or at least for me, because I have big hands and these are small screws. Anyway, once you get it together, it'll look like, oh well, the best way I can explain this, it'll, it looks like a, the starting of, starting of an airplane. Um, but basically you have this set up so that way whenever your camera is sitting on this, the lens will rest on this right here. So that way if, you move, if you're moving around it won't mess your lens up or um, just an, an additional thing that they have set up for that. Which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, I, didn't, I wouldn't have thought about that if, it, if my shoes, if I, was, if I was doing this setup or if I was making this product I wouldn't have considered the lens thing. So that's something neat that I didn't know about before now. The reason why I'm going to go ahead and tell you to put this on first is because this shows you which way the front facing uh, the front is facing so that way you have this set up so you don't have to worry about that moving forward um, and that should work perfect through the rest of the assembly and we'll go through how to mount this in a little bit uh, I want to go ahead and add the rest of the stuff to the camera so we'll move into that now uh, much like this bracket right here there is an arrow printed on this side as well because whenever you slide this on you're going to be placing it like this clicking in this button that's very well hidden and sliding it on to the portion where it won't move except for a little bit this also like the other portion you can lock on the side here and it will no longer slide so that's something to keep in mind as well while you're setting it up um, so we're not going to add this to this just yet but i wanted to make sure that you had that just in case you get lost or something like that along the way so this right here this this piece itself it has a small perforated uh, bit right here where you can start to see the beginning of a thread pattern. It might be hard to see on camera, uh, but towards the sides you can see a little bit better. There's threads on that side and it's also slightly larger than the rest of the little slit there. That's set up specifically so you can stick um, this little screw through here like that. And essentially all you want to do is take your screw and then just try and get the thread started ever so slightly because it will be kind of finicky depending upon how, how you get this going. Obviously you don't want to mess up the threads on this because this is kind of like a, a one-time thing because it's, it's predominantly made out of metal. Uh, but once you get it set up there and it gets past the, the sliding portion, from that point it moves all the way around so basically if you don't like the way your camera is set up there you can slide it back to here or there and you can take it off just by unthreading it and screwing it back out that same way so this is where this comes into play like i was mentioning earlier for the micro tripod there uh, the, there's threads at the bottom of each Canon camera, or if you're using a different style camera, um, it, it's, it may be different, it really just depends. Um, this arrow is also a good indicator to show you which direction to not put it. 
Basically, the, you want to have it set up to where, uh, whenever you're mounting this, you want to make sure that the arrow is pointed towards the back of the camera or the display screen, which is the best way to identify which is the back if you don't know how that works. Uh, that's, that's a joke, by the way. If you don't know which direction is the front or the back of a camera, then um, we might need to consider a new career field for you. Um, we'll, we'll also do that in the consulting portion of the Wheeler Rose production team. Um, anyway, that's a joke. We don't have the consulting portion. You just basically want to make it flow flush with the body of the camera. Most cameras, or at least the width portion, like this one is perfectly width wise where I have it screwed in at. On either side it's flush. So you want to have it flush to where either it's sitting on one side or the other. Um, it may throw off the balancing portion of the camera or this, the balancing portion of the gimbal, which is what we're about to go into in the next couple of bits. Uh, you don't have to tighten it down. Uh, me personally, I'm gonna tighten that down just a hair, just so that way I make sure that it doesn't, it won't come off and we'll be using that little slit Phillips head thing that they sent along with it. Um, obviously you can just use a flat head, not a Phillips, my brain. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Now that we have the pieces set up, uh, what you want to do is you want to unlock and relock the gimbal itself so you can have an easier way of setting it up. And I'll go ahead and do that now. So on each independent piece of this gimbal as a whole, you can lock and unlock each individual portion of it. Uh, for what we're doing here, I'm going to do that so that way I have a set where it won't move. Because if you try and do this when it moves, it'll make it so much more difficult than it needs to be. So uh, just to prevent that, just to uh, just to make it a little bit easier for the assembling part, it's better if everything's locked together. Plus it'll give you a, a better concept as to uh, which way the front is, because like I mentioned before with the Canon camera, this is kind of harder to figure out where the front is versus where the rear is, because it's on a uh, 360 degrees axis. So if it moves and you don't realize which way the front was or which way the back was before it moved, then you, you know, it might not work out in your benefit. Again, make sure that everything is unlocked on this before you slide it on, because if not, then it won't click properly, or, or at least it'll go to a certain point and then it won't slide on fully. So I'm gonna take this side, and there's also an arrow right there as well to show you which direction you need to slide it on at. And you're going to get it flush and then slide it on. And then once you get it to the point where it gets to the little magnetic piece or the piece where you press and slide, uh, because again, it goes but so far until you lock it into place. Um, basically, once you get it past that and you hear the click, you're all set. So for what I'm doing, I'm gonna go ahead and put it right about in the middle and then I'm going to take the little tab on the back, the metallic locking system right here and I'm going to slide this out. I'm gonna show you again just to make sure you get that. And then that locks this axis in place. And then this one right here is the one that we were talking about earlier. That locks this sliding portion. Um, I'm also going to lock this one in place as well so that way both those axes do not slide while I'm trying to put the camera on. So now that we have that stuff set up, I'm going to take the Mark V and I'm going to place it on top of where the, well, actually I take back everything I just said. I'm gonna have to slide that out a little bit further because this camera is big too. So let's do that. Put that as far over as possible. I'll lock that there so that way it won't move. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and add that to it. So now I'm gonna take this camera and I'm going to set it on top of where this is at, where it's flush on either side. Once you hear it click into place, it should be good. And then you slide it all the way back until it clicks as well. And then much like the other portion, you want to lock this into place as well, which is sliding it on this side where the plugins are at towards the back. So then now we have everything locked into place and we're ready to try and start balancing the camera in just a little bit, which would basically mean figuring out where everything adjusts to. All right, uh, one more thing I didn't pay attention to uh, before I tried to do that continuation of that clip is that I'm going to um, add this to this. This is the part I was talking about earlier where you can basically mount it into place to where it basically holds up your lens a little bit better because these these cameras can get heavy depending upon how big it is because obviously you're cramming a lot of technology into a really small place. So, um, the, the, again, wouldn't have thought about that. That's a really cool feature. I'm glad that they added that to that. Um, but just be mindful of that because if you don't have it set up, it won't do anything harmful to it, but it'll probably hinder what you're doing if you're not careful. So um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm glad I was reminded about that. Appreciate it. Um, so now we're gonna go into the portion where we're gonna go over the modes, take a look at some of this stuff and try and balance this because this is a heavy, this is a heavy camera. So it might take a little bit and you'll probably watch me freak out because it's gonna look like $2,000 worth of equipment's gonna fall on the ground, but it's not. It actually holds it pretty well. So uh, we'll get into that now. These green uh, outlined plugins right here, uh, these are for your focus features. Um, I'm not sure how these work because I haven't delved into that side of the gimbal stuff. Uh, that's stuff that I've heard people mention and I've seen specs online about. Uh, so I'm not sure how that works, but this is just an example so I can explain to you what's on the back. There's a yellow outlet plug uh, that is going to be used for your camera. That's where the the multimedia cord or the multimedia plug and the USB-C, which is what this is. It's universal to USB-C, so we'll go ahead and plug that in there on that side. The indicator that your camera is connected is a camera on the back screen. Uh, before we do anything else with this, however, I would like to go ahead and try and do some manual balancing just because I know that this camera is going to be heavy. So if I can manually step by step balance this on the gimbal whenever I get to the portion on the inside that will make this so much more easier. So because this is two to three independent axes there's a lock here, a lock here, and a lock here as well. Uh, this will be the first one I'm gonna d dive into and once I get this rounded properly I'll start with this one and then this one as well. So let's do that. So step one, unlock it and it seems like it's already balanced for the most part. I have it as far back on the axes as possible. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit and see if it'll dip. Doesn't look like it. I might need to get it to where it dives back just a hair, just so it's a little bit further pointing up, which would be sliding that slide bar, which is the lock system that you guys saw on the back. Too far and it does that because the assembly's heavy. heavy. We're gonna bring it to right about, so if all the, if all the way forward, is or no about halfway yeah there's measurements on the side but much like everything else we do who, who who needs measuring you know that that's good i like that i'm gonna lock that there that's pretty level you i'd say you think this is level right watch this as soon as you do the rotation level too heavy and then the best way to fix this is there, you remember the uh, unlock portion? I'm gonna unlock this as well so I can show it to you real quickly. You see this little lock bar on the back? This is the portion that we're gonna be de dealing with. Um, now, I will be honest with you, I have big hands and because I have big hands, I'm scared to break stuff like this, but this is very difficult. So I'm gonna unlock this and then I'm going to press on this side to try and get it to slide and it's coming out really slow oh it locked itself into place again okay so now it's tilted more this way so i need to push it in a little that's pretty level because because this is like metal component on a metal component it's, it's hard to pull apart, so obviously don't try and break it, but do your best. Yeah, put as much stress on it as you see fit, and then it should auto-correct itself. If, I don't know if you can see that or not, as it sways on the axes where it tries to keep it level. And it's not even cut on yet, so these, these aren't the motors even active, active yet. This is the self-balancing system inside of the harness itself which is kind of a cool thing they actually put technology into it to where it's not e even if it's not working like on it's still trying to balance the camera which is really awesome because that's crazy all right so i don't know if you can hear that audibly but the the gimbal is basically like shaking to notify me that this camera set up the way they have it it doesn't like it so there is a screen here it's got four different things it's got mode balance info and settings what you want to do is you want to hit settings and then hit auto calibration then once you hit a start calibrating and then it's going to like basically shake the camera and then it'll shake it the opposite direction take it up level it out take it back down 
now it's buzzing really bad because it's telling me that it needs to be in my hand and then it should be already calibrated for this camera now there's a couple things that come along with this can with this gimbal specifically if you see right here there's a, a little trigger you can actually change modes with the trigger by clicking it and it changes the uh the label of stuff there, there's like little icons next to the camera portion which you saw a couple minutes ago uh, the modes that it has set up is pan follow it has a lock feature which apparently which just locks the camera where it's at so that would be your tripod mode there's the follow feature there's the pov feature there's a go feature a vortex feature and a portrait feature um, because this does have a sliding axis right here where my camera or, or where my fingers are at on the camera you can also undo this and then slide it right here at the very top to get that camera angle that everyone's looking for on for TikTok, that aspect ratio that you're looking for uh, for TikTok videos and stuff like that. So that'll be something cool that we can mess around with in the future. Um, we'll have that set up for that. Uh, but something else cool about this is there's this little thumb module thing which controls all of the rotators. And it's basically set up to where down is down goes up and up goes down. And that basically moves it in like a stationary thing. So basically if we have if we have something set up to where I'm following Andrew on a racetrack or something, I could put this on a tripod and basically hold it and try and get the motors set up properly to be able to follow him and then change direction and all that stuff, which is pretty decent. Obviously, you have to change the motor settings for the different pace that you're trying to record for, um, but that's what it shows you on that side as well. So just to give you a good perspective of how this works as a whole, which is pretty cool altogether. So with the trigger function at the very front, uh, one click takes you between different modes. It gives you the ability to change, like I mentioned before, j just for a handheld portion. Uh, this little slide bar right here at the bottom as well, it allows you to change the uh, ISO inside of the camera, which I really like, so you can do it on the fly. Uh, two clicks, I'm not sure, I can't remember what two clicks does. One, two. Uh, well, that's three clicks. This takes it into selfie mode. This is for all the people at home that are interested in the vlogging style setup where you can basically, uh, well, if this camera wasn't so flipping heavy, you would have it set up to like this where you can be like, what's up guys, welcome to the channel, yada, yada, yada. You know how that works. You know those people, those people that do those videos. So that would be the setup for that. So you'd have that for that. Also, I wouldn't recommend using this camera for it even though that looks, uh, that might look cool. I don't know how that, yeah. Yep. That's interesting. Anyway, so that's a cool little feature that they added just so they're not just reaching one specific style or one specific, um, well, customer group. It's, it's an entity that everyone can enjoy as a whole. So that's pretty cool to take into consideration. Okay. So it might be hard to see with all of the display stuff that's on the screen as of right now, uh, but there's a little red button right here at the bottom where my thumb's at, right there next to the white button and, and that little joystick thing uh, that basically moves the camera around. If you hit that red button, I'll let you uh, look at the camera so that way you can see it happen. But if you do like a one click, it'll make it focus. So now, well, apart from the fact that it's extremely bright out there, it'll focus the camera for you just by clicking it once then now you're ready to record whatever you're trying to get over there if this should work i'm not sure if this is going to work with this camera specifically because there's a flip feature uh, where you can switch it from picture to video all right so it looks like it won't do it with this camera but um with the r6 body so if you're working with any of the r6 5 7 that now exists now uh, it'll work with that i tested that earlier um, off camera just to make sure I had a ballpark idea of what this looks like um, but it won't work with this one and it's probably probably just because um, of the flip feature where you can switch it between both modes I'll have to do some more research on it to confirm that um, but I won't know until I do that so that'll be something interesting to take a look at and just a little bit or something like that so we'll have that squared away for you we're gonna use the 250 as an example of a moving object so we can use this as an, in a practical sense. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record twice, once with this and then once with my hands. And then we'll, we'll, we'll also try and do the, um, the linear feature for like a, uh, 
for like TikTok or something like that. So, so for all the people out there that might want to do TikTok content, uh, you'll be, we'll be able to test that for you guys at home. So we'll be able to do that for you. And then, um, yeah, that'll be cool. So we'll do that real quickly. And um, we're gonna do a pan, which is essentially just me taking the camera and following along like this. Uh, we'll be doing a follow along, which would basically be me doing this while following the, the vehicle. And then the last one that we'll do is the one I just mentioned before, well, turn sideways. So just a little bit of a compare and contrast real quickly. I do think that this gimbal will be perfect for the slower type content that we plan on doing in the future. Uh, something that's more honed into like weddings per se, or something that's a little bit more sentimental just to grasp the concept. However, I do think that faster paced content like photography for um, Lakeview Speedway or Florence Motor Speedway or stuff like that, uh, that we've done in the past would be better without the gimbal, just because you need that mobility, that torso turn. And I'm sure that after doing a lot of um, practicing with the gimbal itself you could probably get to the point where you could do that but just for right now for time's sake I think it'd be better to split that content up based off of the certain scenarios that we're going to be recording um, but again I think that the product as a whole is perfect for what we need moving forward and it's exactly what we're going to need to improve some of the content that we didn't want shaky so Obviously, drop your comments, your concerns, your comparing and contrasting. Obviously, if you have a product like this and there's something that I did miss, let me know. I'll try and do a video to uh, cover uh, all the bases that I may have missed. And obviously, if you're watching this on the Wheeler Bros channel and you miss some stuff or you don't know how to install your own, then go check out the WBP page and we do a full explanation of everything. It's about a 35 minute video without adding this clip into it. So it might be a little bit longer, but it's extensive and it's good for what you need for that product. But Obviously, if you watched it on the WBP page and I got everything, then that's awesome. If not, let me know, and I'll try and fix that. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you made it this far, uh, go ahead and type in the bottom gumball because that's the comedy version of what we're doing. I believe I said that accidentally while we always recording this video, so it just kind of happened that way. So if you made it this far, say gumball. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you supporting the video and clicking on it in the first place. If you do enjoy, like the video. It helps out the channel, and who knows, you might be recommending it for someone else in the future. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Now we the coders, and I'm on 10 with my woadies Shout out my homies, we gon' ball for them trophies Like they can't hold me, thinking God, I've been chosen Fuck through the motions, all them times, I was hopeless Now we the coders Look, I've been tryna tell y'all since like 1-3 Got my soul up in the trunk, and my God got the key Spirit tryna tell